Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are back. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Safe Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David. And this week, I'd like to start the show off with a little bit of an announcement. Um, due to the continuing um, participation in the podcast... It was decided last week that both Hawk, now called Scarecrow, and Stuart are both going to be promoted to co-hosts. What that means is they all get to run their own segments and do their own things. And um, yeah, they'll be joining us on a more regular basis. So anyway, without any further ado, here is Scarecrow. Evening, guys. And Hawk. Wait, what? What? Ah ha ha, gotcha. Stuart. And Stuart. Ha 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 ha. What? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Woo. Please. Oh, oh, we're off to a great start with the shenanigans already. <laughs> Please, that's rough. Shenanigans. Uh. That wasn't where we'd invited Mick Malloy to join us this week. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Ouch. Anyway, on tonight's show we have... Uh, news from star trek 3 we have some news from 007 the new terminator trailer the suicide squad movie has been cast um news coming out about the deadpool movie and last but not least a little bit of sci fact as opposed to sci-fi we have news on the orion um space thingy <laughs> space Mars Space thing. <laughs> Space thingy. Technical Mars bubble jumper. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, that sound wrong anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's get this let's get this started with uh we'll go with Star Trek just because it was the first thing I said. Okie dokie. So, popped up in the last couple of days on my news feed that Robert Orky has Roberto Orky, sorry, not Robert is no longer directing or having anything to do with the new Star Trek 3 movie that's being pro- that's in production at the moment so basis is his script was so horrible that Paramount wants nothing to do with it so Star Trek 3 is probably going to take a bit longer for us to get, for us to get on to again but maybe this time we'll actually have a decent plot. Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't actually mind um, Jar Jar's attempts at doing the Star Trek reboots. It's sort of what got me into Star Trek, to be honest. And yes, I know, internet, go to Meltdown. Jar Jar Abrams actually, as far as I'm concerned, didn't do a bad job in Star Trek. No. If you view it as a sci-fi movie, not as a Star Trek movie. I want to clarify that point. And it's not Abrams that got sacked. <laughs> I know. Um, it's Roberto Orki, the guy who... Helped took, Abrams. Has taken, took, he helped Abrams, and with Abrams having switched over to doing the new Star Wars movies... Hence Jar Jar. Hence Jar Jar, exactly. Orki took over completely on Star Trek, and now Paramount has told him to take a hike. Yeah. So... Um... Yeah, well, I guess it's, it sucks to be him, but on the plus side, as you said, the, it might make the new Star Trek movie more interesting. Um, Maybe we won't get a rehash of Wrath of Khan. Isn't that what we had last time? Exactly. Yes. Maybe what? we'll actually get some new content. Yeah. But... Instead of a rehash of the of the existing stuff. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love the new Star Trek. It's... A new modern swing on an old classic, but there are some things that he could do without, like giant super dreadnought that's bigger than a sovereign class. Yeah, that thing was a tad broken. And to be perfectly honest, the new um, Star Trek ships are actually scaled a lot larger 
than the original series ones. Like the new Enterprise is meant to be almost the size of the Sovereign class, maybe like six, seven hundred meters long, according to um, the Star Trek Starship magazine thing that I get. Yeah, I agree on that, but at the same time, compared to that super dreadnought, it looked like it was a shuttle. Yeah, which is mildly terrifying. That said, it's not. If... They haven't done a really good job with scales in that in those new movies, have they? They sort of jumps all over the place. Yeah, if I remember correctly from the Star Trek books and histories, that the only super dreadnought in the Federation fleet is run by Sector 30, 31, and its captain's gig is a Defiant class. Yeah. Um, well, I know that one of the one of, probably one of my favourite Star Trek ships, which is a fan-made ship, um, we had it in the um, Sci-Fi at War mod as the carrier for the Star Trek faction, is the Phoenix class, which uh, is meant to be the successor to the Sovereign class in the Fanon lore anyway, um, which was it actually looks really, really nice if you look it up. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's I'm not arguing. I'm that's... not going to argue with that. They have got some after um, they got away after the next generation, and they decided to get away from the giant milk bowl in space designs a bit. The designs started to get really epic. Yeah, they actually looked human for once. Exactly. Uh, I don't understand how they got to the giant, uh, giant milk sources in the sky. Basically, the cat's wet dream, but. Yeah, and just back on the note of um, Star Trek Three, do we actually know much about what's going to sort of happen? We know that um, they're courting Shatner and Spock, but they won't be playing a flashback version in this one. I heard. I heard they'll, um, if they they do include them, they're going to have them as just a head nod to the sort of instead of playing themselves in the original timeline, they're going to play grown-up versions of themselves in the new timeline. Something like that. I don't see that working too well, because Shatner has... Yeah, I don't know if you got the chance to see him in person. Oh, I saw him, in, I saw him at... Um, Comic-Con. Comic-Con. Comic-Con? Yeah. I don't see how he's going to be able to pull off the, the future look for... A, uh, new and young and full of piss and vinegar, Sh- uh, Kirk. Yeah, he's got, this guy's got more Captain Perfect hair, pinky than I hate having to say Ripshirt ever had. Yes, but Ripshirt had the dramatic pause. Sorry, had well, to go there. I'll give him that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him that. Uh, I would like to. I'm kind of hoping that. If they do bring those two in, it's more along the lines of the Mirror Universe. Yeah. So, um, what would you like to see in Star Trek Three? If there's, say, you're in charge of production, you get his, he gets the ask, you get the job, you can tell any story you want. What direction would you take the story? Straight up, I'd go back to the uh, truth of original generation Star Trek. They're explorers that just have the really rotten luck of blundering into the most impossible situations, which pretty much gives you open license to do everything. You don't have to worry about the Borg or most of the Federation alliances or any of the political bullcrap because it hasn't really got started yet. No. You've eliminated. You've pretty much eliminated the Vulcans as a force in the in, in the in that region in of the, space. Yeah. In that region of space in the first movie. So the Federation can go off in whatever direction it wants to at this point, as long as it stays fairly true to the peaceful explorer ideal. Well, I wouldn't mind seeing, and it wasn't really highlighted in the show as much, it was more highlighted in the extra universe Star Trek material, was the Federation Klingon War, which happened around the time of Kirk's Enterprise. I would love to see an epic battle between... 2030 Federation ships and 2030 Klingon vessels just shelling the ever-loving crap out of each other would be epic to watch. Especially given that they've kind of proven in the first and second movie 
that Federation ships are no longer God Mod ships. Yeah. They'll take a pounding and they'll take it well and be get beaten in the crap, but they'll actually look like they've taken damage, not like a quick coat of paint and it's back to full health. Exactly. Um, anyway, just a quick shout out to the guests. If you guys sign in and um, want to use the chat function, feel free. I'm keeping an eye on it. You guys can give us any feedback and I'll more than happily share it on the air. Um, so, so anyway, look, there's a couple of cool Star Trek projects that are coming out at the moment, fan-made ones. You've got Star Trek, I think it's Star Trek Horizons and Star Trek Axanar, both of which look like they're going to be really, really cool. Um, so, I'm sort of, on one hand, I'm looking forward to Star Trek 3. On the other hand, I'm looking forward to see where sort of Axanar and that take the story, because I think they're both, it's going to it's gonna be good one way or the other. Anyway, exactly. We've... Also, if you're interested, again, if you if you can't wait for the fan made stuff or the official stuff, and you just or you just want to tool around in the Star Trek based universe, don't forget about uh, the former Atari game now owned by Perfect World, Star Trek Online. They're always coming up with new and crazy stuff to do in there. Uh, newest pack has them has us playing in the Delta Quadrant once more. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, last time I was playing, which was about three days ago, I wound up in a massive fight with four Herogen Dreadnoughts. Oh, God. That's... That was fun. You say fun, I say, kill with fire, run away! Oh. Yeah, I was like, run away! I'm <laughs> well, considering, I'm, considering I'm p my ship is a Prometheus class, complete with multi-vector assault mode, fun takes on a whole new meaning. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to jump away to our first ad break. When we come back, we're going to be let Stuart take over, and he gets to talk 007. What? What's it, this is called? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not call on Yoda's Jedi. The Empire is coming to town. We have a Death Star. We've tested it twice. Tracking down rebels and ending their lives. The Empire is coming to town. I have a very bad feeling about this. We see you when you're It's kind of gross. <laughs> you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not fall on your dad. The Empire is coming to What's the best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why passes to Hawaii Con, of course. The 2015 four day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out of this world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit hawaiicon.com. Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies, strays, dragons, smugglers, and thieves, will they prevail? WWW the Star Crystal, remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. Hello, and welcome back to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. <laughs> and they've been doing that the entire <laughs> ad break. <laughs> Two minutes of 007 coming through my speakers. <sighs> oh, I lost that high pitch there. Okay, yeah. anyway. Um, Stuart, this one is 100% yours. Your first segment on your own. Tell us about 007 thingamajig. So the uh, the next installment in the James Bond uh, films is going to be titled Spectre. Now those who are Bond fans remember Spectre in the old 1960s movies. 
Vector. Oh yeah. Stands for Special Executive for Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge, and Extortion. God, that's fucking long. Oops. That sounds like Shield. It's like they wanted it to spell something, so they thought, okay, now what words can we use to make this damn thing make sense? And they <laughs> went, screw it. Random words will do. Spell Specter. Homeland Intervention and Logistics Division. Like I said, <laughs> random words will do. <laughs> yep. So uh, Daniel Craig will still be playing uh, Bond. It's good because I actually like his Bond a lot of, over a lot of the older Bonds. It's yeah. I have a respect for some of the older ones like Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Um, also, not much respect for um. Pierce. Moonraker. No, I actually thought Pierce did a bloody good job. Everyone loves Pierce's Bond. Yes, but he's Pierce Brosnan. Everybody loves Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> <laughs> not he... everyone. My ex-wife hated his guts. Oof. Most people like Pierce Brosnan. He could probably just stand on... He's sort of like Sean Connery in a lot of ways. He could just sit on stage and go, I am Pierce Brosnan. And I can't do his voice at all. No, um, no, no, compared to Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pierce and, Equally yeah, is horrible. Pierce Brosnan and Sean Connery were fantastic. Yeah. I think it took Daniel Craig at least two Bonds yeah, to get into the Royale swing of it. it. And Quantum Souls, and then Skyfall. And Skyfall, he was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, Skyfall, he nailed it. He had it down pretty well in his first one. Casino Royale. Casino Royale. It went a little bit wrong with Quantum, but and then they just he recovered it pretty well for it. Yeah. Now the cool. Now mentioning Skyfall actually is that they actually kept um some. They've kept the uh script uh the script writer. Uh, the executive, uh, the producers, uh, Michael uh, Wilson and Barbara Piccoli, who are also in Skyfall. Uh, unfortunately, they they um they changed uh, cinematographers. However, they got a really cool one in um, Hoyt Van Hoyt Temer, who did um who did a uh, in, um, Interstellar. Nice. So, okay, yeah. I can't. Okay, he's dead before. It's gonna be good just on that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, and in um, keeping on returning cast members. They've got the returning M, who is Ralph Fiennes, uh, Money Penny, Naomi Harris. Well, they need uh, to keep the they need to keep the M that they just introduced. It. They got yeah, rid of um, on. Judy Dench for after how, how many movies she did the entire Pierce Brosnan series, and, and then she, she up did, till now. Yeah, the only she, real she did down Craig. No, the only real thing I can remember her doing is in one episode, in one of the movies. I can't remember which one is her making out with the ho- in the holodeck. <laughs> and, and, and Q walk in and just be like, "What the hell is going on?" And, <laughs> yeah, yeah I re- that's that's pretty much her, the, everything I remember of her from any of those movies. I'm sorry, I have but... to say I like the new Q as well. Yeah, yeah. Ben, ben uh, Wishaw is a great Q, and they're Don't also keeping me... um, Tanner as well, uh, Rory Kinnear. Yeah. Now, yeah, they. No Q offense Q. to um. Oh, what's his name? The previous one? The guy who replaced the original Q. Yeah. Um. Oh, um. Oh. Jeez, I can't remember his name. He's such a. Fu- he is a funny guy in his own right, but Q was not the right role for him. No. Yeah, I, I, I know who you mean. I think, they get, I think our one listener knows who you mean. <laughs> Alright. So, now we come on to the new people. So. Andrew Scott, who is in Sherlock, who um, will be in it. He's playing a Whitehall-based character called Den Berg. It'd be and really cool if there was a, if there was a Sherlock slash 007 crossover. That would be amazing. That uh, would be almost as spectacular as a 007 uh, Doctor Who crossover. They'd be sort of right up the list of things that I would try and sneak in together. <laughs> Everyone wants Doctor Who Sherlock. Yeah. Oh no, Doctor Who Sherlock 007 all together. Oh, yes. And right. it, it's, it's not even a plot point. It's just in the background. You just see the current Doctor walk into a phone booth with the current companion. For no reason whatsoever. It's just, oh, just you, in the background. And just watch the internet just melt down. No, it's no. Like... I, I, I've, just, I've just now got a mental image of the Doctor walking across to the... Uh, and doing the James Bond thing with the Sonic yeah. screwdriver. <laughs> yeah. Chip, 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 chip. <laughs> right. So, also... Uh, on the villain side of things, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy actor Dave Bautista, who was Drax in it, 
yeah. we're playing a henchman called Mr. Hinks. Now we come to every guy's favorite part of this. The Bond Girls. I hear that screwdriver. Hello, nurse. <laughs> so, Italian actress Monica Bellucci. Bellucci, Bellucci I always get that wrong. That's and okay, Francis, huh? And Francis Leah Sadox have been unveiled as new Bond Girls names. Lucia Ciara and Madeline Swan. I'm pretty sure you pronounced that last one wrong. What, Madeline Swan? <laughs> I realized I did that. <laughs> My so question like is: seven goes at the other days, and you get the last one right. It's like, no, nope, you got it wrong. <laughs> did the same thing on Star Wars trailer last uh, week when I when I, when I fucked up the um the uh, Millennium Falcon and Tatooine part. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, my only question is this: Have they beaten the Bond girl curse yet? Not sure. Well, when you have a look yeah. at them... For those who don't know what the Bond cu Girl Curse is, who happen to be listening to this later, can just elaborate on that really quickly. <laughs> well, basically, the Bond Girl Curse is that no girl who's done a Bond Girl has ha survived with her um, career intact. <laughs> well, interesting fact about this, actually. Uh, Monica Bellucci is actually 55. She's actually she's actually an acclaimed actress, so. So it's all. <laughs> as far as I know, the only person who survived the Bond girl curse. Halle Berry. No. Nope. When Bond was the last time you saw her in a movie? Recently, actually, I saw her in one. As a uh, big name member. Yeah, you know, it was like it was. She was like main person in it. I have to look it up. This is a new. This is a movie that has completely slipped over my radar. So as far as I'm concerned. It's held for her. But from the classic Bond girl curse, the only one who made a comeback from that was in, uh, played Domino. Oh, and yes. The only way she made a comeback was doing 10 years of TV as Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. <laughs> After her stint as a Bond girl, she could not get an acting job in a movie. No. Uh. All right. Now I know this is this is a really cool one because there's a really big rumor about this. So, double Oscar winner Christoph Waltz will be also in the film, playing a character called Oberhauser. Now I believe that that's just a code name for Bond's old nemesis, Blofeld. Because it's Spectre after all. You can't ha you can't have you can't have Blofeld without with Spectre. Like it, they just go together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. They just work. I think there's a valid point with this. Yeah. Now, comes the really cool part, the Bond car. The new Bond car will uh. be the Aston Martin DB10. Nice. Yes, we got, we're going back to the DB series. Good, because that was the one gripe I had about freaking the last Bond. There will only be Skyfall. 10 DB10s made in the world. Yes, they did the play on, they did the pun with 10. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. So what'd you say? Uh, that was the only thing I didn't like about Skyfall. What, that they used the classic car? The death of the classic DB5. Yeah, that was... That was definitely, yeah, a very sad moment. I have never cried in a Bond moment up until the point they blew up the DB5. Yeah. That was rough. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other fans were the same. Because that car survived three Bond movies, plus the Cannonball Run. Oh, the Cannonball Run. <laughs> it, it got, the D Aston Martin DB5 Bond car was entered as is, modifications and all, into the first Cannonball Run with the driver, Roger Moore who was, at the time, the current Bond. That is pretty funny. <laughs> if you don't believe me, check it out. He accidentally launches himself out of the car while opening a... while trying to pour a glass of champagne for some random girl. That is even funnier. Yeah. So I'm going to go to a couple of stats, actually, about Skyfall that Spectre are going to have to, unfortunately, try and follow. Uh, Skyfall was the highest-grossing fil um, film of all time in, in, in the UK and in Bond. It was the highest-grossing Bond film with 1.1 billion dollars 
at the worldwide box office. The, the, the only thing I find funnier about that is almost immediately after it came out, MGM filed bankruptcy. Yeah, I know, that was hilarious. <laughs> the film also picked up two Oscars. One for Adele's uh, a, um, title track, because that was an amazing track. Yeah. And another for sound editing. So they've got some pretty big boots to follow with Spectre. But the, I think since they've got most of the writing cast from um, Skyfall, I think it's going to be really good. Yeah. The only thing I'm concerned about, and this is my literal only gripe with Interstellar, is for the love of God, do not bury the words they are saying under the goddamn music. <laughs> At what point has that ever been a problem for Bond? I'm well, not, I'm well aware of that. I'm just saying that's just the, the uh, music or the words being buried because the words get buried. When the words get buried, is usually by explosions. Yeah, see, I, I can handle that. But when they're saying some important piece of dialogue, and all of a sudden the the music sort of kicks up and goes me 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 over the top, it's like, shut the music off. What the fuck are they saying? I like techno babble. Techno babble, good. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, also now we're showing our sci-fi fangs. Yeah, a little bit. Nah, 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 nah. Alright, I should also give out the location for where they're going to shoot Bond, because it's not just going to be in, Eng in England. Jolly good. So it's going to be London, Mexico City, Rome. I'm going to say these last two wrong. Uh, Tangier and Erfoud in Morocco. So what you're saying is you we need to that. stalk them. One city at a time. Time. <laughs> Alright, ten years could be a problem. Morocco? Not so much. Because after all, what was the last major movie that had a anything to do with Morocco? Madagascar? No. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to think. I really can't think of anything. Well, I was going to make chirping sounds, but Madagascar, that just wins. <laughs> now, the last major live action movie that had something to do with M Morocco was the Moroccan GP in Iron Man 2. Oh. Oh. Where Tony went... That's a good point. That's a, where that's Tony a was point. driving the race car and he got cut in half. Oh, yeah. Where, where, where Tony was driving the race car while blind off his face drunk <laughs> at a kajillion and miles an hour. <laughs> survived. Don't ask me how. It's the drunk man ragdoll. It survives everything. <laughs> You could I'm fall still... off a 50-story building, drunk man ragdoll, to the ground, stand up, and then still find a cab. And somehow find a witch's hat and a kebab in between you standing up and the cab. It could be right next to you. There'll still somehow be a witch's hat and a kebab in your hand when you hop in. <sighs> <laughs> it's just it's drunk rules, okay? Uh, anyway, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to play the Terminator Genesis trailer audio <laughs> for you guys to listen to. And when we come back, we're going to have a chat about that. So we'll be back in about two minutes or so. So if you guys want to grab a drink or something, go right ahead. See you when we get back. Helps if I turn up the channel that has the trailer playing on it. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I look at each of you. And I see the marks of this long and terrible war. If we die tonight, mankind dies with us. The machine sent a Terminator back to the time before the war to kill my mother, Sarah Connor. Sir, let me save her. What you're doing right now, this is the end of the war. The time you're going back to should be scared and weak. Take care of her for me, Kyle. John sent me here to save you. From the Terminator that was sent back to kill me, I know, but we already took care of him. 
We have been waiting for you. This time, John sent you to it no longer exists. Everything's changed. We can stop Judgment Day from happening. Run! Where is he? I'll be back. What? Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, it's just about time for us to talk about Terminator. We just played the audio for the um, recently released Terminator trailer for you guys, so that if you hadn't sort of seen it, you could sort of get a rough idea of what's going on. Um, starts off with sort of the future scape and shows all the different Terminators and stuff. And it, to me, it doesn't look that bad. There's moments where it's sort of a bit cringeworthy, like old Arnie versus CG Arnie. Very sort of, ugh. But other than that, we do have one person here who finds it absolutely atrocious and is about to go to town on it. So I turn the microphone over to Stuart. Ah, oh, where to begin on this? No, well, I don't find it all atrocious. I do like the beginning of it. Um, because that follows the timeline for um for what the first for what it, for what the first um one was for what the first Terminator was because they because they sent Carl back to save Sarah in the first Terminator so they did that then it gets weird from there on in I, I must admit Terminator Liquidator morphing out of the um engine of the car partway through that looks yeah, that was that was cool that was cool. Terminator chopping a chunk of himself off and th- the liquid Terminator chopping a chunk of himself off and throwing it like a spear? That's gonna be really bad. <laughs> yeah. Assuming he's got remote control of those, um, of that liquid metal, which effectively is nanites. So I'm just gonna go with calling it nanites, because... Yeah, I'm not sure what there is. I haven't seen, I haven't been able to see much uh, discussing what that kind of, what that, um, metal would be. Yeah. But the, apparently, I've heard, I've heard the, the storyline for it. It's, yeah. um, what? Sarah Connor, um, Sarah Connor's actually raised by old Arnie Terminator. Oh, wow. Oh, for God's sakes. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, now we're really getting into grandfather paradoxes here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but isn't the Terminator series one massive paradox anyway? If you really think about it. So wait, Dude? You, Dude? Dude? comes back from the future does the mum of the guy that sent him back in time so that he can so she can give birth to the guy who sent him back in time to prevent the to save her from the terminator trying to kill her because he says she gives birth to the guy who came back from the future to uh, i think my brain just crashed what time you want me to hit the doctor who yeah it's it's very wibbly wobbly timey wimey terminator series way too much wibbly wobbly I would actually love to turn one of the do- to turn the tenant doctor loose on the Terminator series. What I would love to do is turn the human form replicators from Stargate up against one of the liquid metal Terminators just to see what happens. Borg versus Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> no one beats a Borg. Nothing beats a Borg. Cyberman versus Arnie Terminator. Cyberman vs. Borg? Yeah, Cyberman vs. Borg is boring. Because the Cyber... Yeah. The, the, right now, the current version of the Cyberman is just a rip-off. Iron Man. It's just a rip-off <laughs> of the... Well, it's Iron Man Borg, effectively. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Uh, back on the back on the Terminator. We, right, yeah. we should try and really keep on topic. We, we don't do that very well. Sorry. No. We, we apologise to our one listener. <laughs> <laughs> the, do, the parts I do like... Is at the very end of the trailer with Arnie saying, I'll be back, and he headbutts the helicopter. <laughs> that was pretty cool. <laughs> hey, it's just like, only Arnie be... can get away with headbutting a <laughs> helicopter and winning. He's literally 
actually, I'll be back. Jumps out head first into another helicopter. Into the into the road or something. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I like how they actually, for the first time, I think it's the first time, they've actually shown the time travel device that they used to come back. Yeah. And like, it I... looks surprisingly familiar. <laughs> Stargate, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it looked it looked very very Stargate here. Either it, 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 it Stargate, it looked like the really bad thing from the very from um, X Men one that was on top of um Lady Liberty. <laughs> In that bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it looks like it. Oh, it. Oh, I'm not disagreeing. It does, but um, yeah. Well, uh, I was gonna say all the thing from uh, um a poor man's version of the thing from Contact. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, oh, oh, something has just come across my feed. I um, knew something was going to happen. I just That's why I mentioned it early in the show, but it's only just been announced. The Orion probe has made its way back to Earth and has successfully splashed down. So, the Orion is effectively the successor to the Saturn V. It's the most powerful rocket that we've ever made, especially by NASA. Um, there's nothing that comes close to it, and they expect to use it to go back to the moon in the 2020s and to Mars in the 2030s. And this thing is an absolute beast. If you haven't watched it take off, ju just watch it. It looks spectacular. It was incredible. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. For the money they spend on those things. Yeah. <laughs> Especially since it's basically a throwaway rocket again. Yeah, but they don't have that much of a choice in the matter. <laughs> well, in my view, they should have been looking into a successor for the shuttle that was still a freaking orbiter design after 10 years. Yeah. Um, they said, oh, it'll be right 40 years later, oh, we need a new replacement, but we got nothing. The, the, the problem with that is that the shuttle was meant to be a cheap way to get to orbit and back, and it never, ever, ever fulfilled any of the checklists for it sort of being able to be maintained as long as it was. It really should have been retired 10 years before it was. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, and all that... For a feasible, for a sci-fi replacement, all I had to look at was a movie. Yeah. Well, what I would love to see Do I need to is... All I need to say is Armageddon. <laughs> yeah. What I would love to see is something like... The International Space Station. Modify that with a high-energy... Um, and this is going to be the hard part. If you can get a strong enough magnetic field around it, you can generate a barrier which will effectively protect it from solar radiation like what Earth's got. Um, if, it would only really take one pod to add it onto it to do that. Give it some thrusters and let it fucking wander our solar system. It's got all the habitats you need. It's got all the oxygen and stuff you need. It's got all that sort of stuff ready to go. It's a lot easier than launching a tiny little fecking capsule. And it's already up there. <laughs> yeah, but we're talking politicians. Yeah, I know. They, they don't logic much. They don't logic at all. Politicians are the anti-logic. Yeah. Except in one situation. Vulcan politicians. <laughs> no, no. See, the Vulcan politicians are the only, aren't the only ones to buck the crowd. They're the only Vulcans that don't use logic. <laughs> Or in the or they follow Tupac. Uh, what's his name from Voyager? Tupac. 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 That's it. Tupac. Um, Tupac. They f oh, dude, my brain is just gone. <laughs> is Tupac dead? Is a, is oh, a um, rapper. I was well aware of that. As I said, I was like, that guy's like a rapper, wasn't he? Oh, whatever. I'll go with it. <laughs> anyway, um, follow his his logic, which he used in an episode I watched the other day. His logic wasn't flawed. He was. So, you could look at it that way as well. But yeah, anyway, um, so, could, back on Terminator, I promise we'll try and stay on Terminator for at least another couple of minutes, if we can, without being distracted. <laughs> Ooh, something... such a stellar track record of that. <laughs> yeah. And derailed. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, wow, my brain just went, my brain just died again, isn't that great? Uh, back to Terminator. Back to Terminator. Um, what do you guys hope to see in the Terminator movie? If 
you guys had a say you could say terminate terminated yourself back in time a little bit to when this movie was being made what would you have liked to have seen in it is it bad that I say can we just stop doing terminator movies you don't need to block the dead horse anymore yeah that's like saying don't do any more alien versus predator movies there's going to be alien movies there's going to be predator movies they're just going to be flogged to death again and again and again and again and again as long as they make money, they're going to keep being flogged. It's like Transformers. I was about to say, kind of what, what, like what Marvel and DC are doing. Yeah, well... Except they're not dead horses. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to Marvel and DC in a minute when we get to Suicide Squad. So, um... What would you guys add? Back to the question. <laughs> a better looking time travel device. I don't actually mind the time travel device. Well, at least make it look look less Stargate-ish. I'd make it look more Stargate-ish. I'd make it a feckin' Stargate itself, just... <laughs> and have, have hey, it, all have you it... gotta do is calculate the solar flares. <laughs> have it have it dial back to the SGC, walk through in front of Colonel O'Neill, and have Arnie just sort of stand there going, Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Arnie, what am I doing here? <laughs> that was a really bad Arnie voice. Oh, I'll be back! God, God kill him with fire. Just... <laughs> You were promoted to co-host and fired in less than a show. How do you feel? Ah, <laughs> uh, Colonel O'Neill, get to the chopper! Oh, God. <laughs> to our one listener, who happens to be listening right now, I, 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 I hereby apologise for what these guys are doing, and I would just like you to know that they have been fired. They have been replaced with their clones. Hello, clones. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um. Is it called Jar Jar Binks? No, that's a scary. That's a scary clone. <laughs> oh God! That reminds me of that story I used. I read once. Actually, when when you mentioned um Jar Jar Abrams, all I had in my head was um was um him on set going, "Okay, Misa, go say action now. Ah, uh, action!" <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Oh. Uh, we need, to, we the, need uh, to find someone that has a Jar Jar Binks costume and get that on camera. Does anyone have a Jar Jar Binks costume? Because I'm pretty sure he's the most universally most hated character ever. In any franchise. Out. Well, in there are others, but uh, there, there are people that have... I don't think anything gets close to Jar Jar. Uh, uh, um, let me put it this way. If you had a choice... Who would you rather spend the evening with? You can be locked in a room with Jar Jar Binks, or locked in a room with a hundred hormonal pregnant women. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> I'll take the women, they're more rational. <laughs> um, I did say Jar Jar Binks because I've had a similar scenario to option number two already happen, and I don't want to do that again. <laughs> can I just take a gun and shoot myself in the head? Yeah. No, I've confiscated all the ammo. Damn no. it! Yeah. Look, I'll just use my lightsaber. There was another character from sci-fi yourself. that I know of that is almost as hated as um, Jar Jar. Kavanaugh from Stargate Atlantis. Rates as one of the most hated characters on the entire Stargate franchise. Kavanaugh. Uh, he was... Th- season 1 of Stargate Atlantis, he was one of the head scientists... And he was constantly butting heads with Weir. He made a gripe oh. video and then got kicked out of the city. The next episode he was in was, I'm pretty sure, was when the um, he came back on the Daedalus. And someone removed all the safeties from the ZPM and they thought it was him. So Ronan went in to kick his ass and he fainted. And then he, he I sort remember of... remember guy now. He pops, he pops in and out for the rest of the season. And then the final episode you see him again. Um, it was in Midway, when the Wraith attacked, he passed out. Um, <laughs> it was just... In other words, he's the random guy that, that likes to complain, but has all the uh, backbone of an amoeba. Yeah, pretty much. So, Anyway, let's move on to our final topic in about a minute. We're just going to do one last really quick ad break. I'm doing it because these guys are both supporters of the show, so one of them oh, has got a job which is why he hasn't joined us recently i'm hoping he might come back soon 
Um, so anyway, here is a really quick ad for HawaiiCon and a really quick ad for um, BC Dane's book. We shall be back in exactly a minute. What's the best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why passes to HawaiiCon, of course. The 2015 four-day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out-of-this-world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit HawaiiCon.com. Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies, strays, dragon smugglers and thieves, will they prevail? WWW the Star Crystal, remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Uh, we're still here and we are moving on to our last two topics of the night. The casting of Suicide Squad and the casting of the Deadpool movie. Uh, Stuart, do you want to talk about the Deadpool movie real quick? Uh, yeah, so uh, over the weekend it was confirmed that Ryan Reynolds will be Deadpool in the Deadpool movie, which is great because he's actually really awesome Deadpool and actually like him better than he was when he was Green Lantern. Yeah, Green Lantern was pretty bad. Also, you can't really Green... blame him for that though. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a bad, it was just bad everywhere. Yeah, that's Green... a also, bad movie. Uh, just quickly before we move over to DC, uh, other Marvel news I forgot to mention is that uh, Benedict Cumberbatch has been confirmed for a Doctor Strange movie. Oh, yes, I knew I'd forgotten something in the pre-show. That's going to be awesome i actually oh, yeah. i can't think of a better person for that if there's well, one thing marvel does and this is across actors. all across all of their movies is whether it's spider-man x-men mostly most of the time um <laughs> for the main people anyway um or the marvel cinematic universe they do a really good job of getting actors that suit the characters that look like the characters when patrick stewart was first asked to do Professor X, he had no idea about it. So they gave him a copy of the, one of the X-Men comics, and he looked at it and goes, what the hell am I doing on the cover? So, yeah. That pretty much summarises how good they, they are at casting their people relative to the characters. So I'm definitely looking forward to Doctor Strange. That's going to be a brilliant movie. So Agreed. But my point comes up. That we've with that, if we get Doctor Strange in an Avengers movie, or tied into any of the major Marvels, that means we're actually going to have two Sherlocks on set at once. Oh, that is a fair point. Because we're going to have Robert Downey Jr. from everyone's favourite Sherlock movie and Iron Man. <laughs> That was and, aimed at the Sherlock movie. Yeah. <laughs> and Cumberbatch, who has done a really good job of Sherlock in the BBC, BBC miniseries. That has been awesome. I love that series. I actually watch episodes of that randomly. Mm. And, and there's a new season coming out next year as well. Yeah, which is going to be great. Cumberbatch exactly. so, is going to be so busy. <laughs> not, only, not only that, but... What's going to happen if we put those two in a room together, considering they both like the alcohol? <laughs> oh, Doctor Strange and Tony Stark together could be hilarious. Please, the, please, please have an outtake where they walk around the room, and instead of using their character names, they just call each other Sherlock. <laughs> think of the blooper reel. <laughs> the blooper reel, this could be great. Uh, 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 anyway, we're... Moving on to uh, the, the casting of Suicide Squad. For those that don't know, Suicide Squad is um, one of DC's bigger uh, franchises. It's sort of like the Avengers, but with supervillains. So the government gets a heap of group of supervillains that have been caught together, um, normally implants a form of explosive or something like that inside them that they can't get out, and then uses them in black ops to take out bad guys that they don't want people to 
think they've taken out. So they've, it's almost like the Avengers, but with super villains as opposed to superheroes. Um, so the film's been cast with uh, Will Smith as Deadshot, Tom Hardy as Rick Flagg, Ma, uh, my brain just died. Margaret Robbie as Harley Quinn, which is going to be cool. Jared Leto as the Joker. Eh, but we can't have the Joker without Harley Quinn. Um, and Jay Courtney as Boomerang, or Jai Courtney as Boomerang. That makes more sense. And Cara... Good God, what the hell? Little... What? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm looking at it going, uh, how do you say that name? Um, Delevingne, Delevingne, check. <laughs> Let me see it. Why is there a G in there? D e l e v i n g n e. Yeah, as enchantress. So. Let me have a look and see what I can if I can actually pronounce it. All right, do you mind if I start off with this? Because I have some pros and cons to this already. Um. Alright, sure. Go for right. it. So, Cara De, De Levine. We'll go with that. Yeah, that works. Alright, so, pros is the cast is actually really awesome. Oh, yeah. Because it, it's always been begged the question of if they were going to do a Harley Quinn, who, who's crazy enough to do it? Because it's not going to be an easy role at all. No, the, Harley Quinn is one of the few characters in DC that was not created in the comics. No, she was not. She was created in the t in the um, animated series. Exactly. And um, people loved her so much that she actually almost got her own series out yeah. of that, which was would have been absolutely fucking bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. As, as long as I have her at least say, Yupsy! Once, I'm happy. <laughs> Right, so yeah, her, um, so Margaret Robbie is an awesome actor. She's an Aussie actor as well, so because she actually used to be on uh, Neighbours before she uh, moved over to the states. I, I never watched that, so I know just background reference for everyone. Obviously, yep. we, all, everyone obviously knows who Will Smith is, like probably biggest actor on that on that um oh, yeah. that cast is I, is a really good thing for De is a really good um pick for Deadshot, I believe. Oh yeah. Well, um, see, a lot of these characters have been in the Flash and Arrow, mainly the Arrow TV series, including the Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad as, yes. as recently come into the Arrow. And um, that's where I go to the con. Yeah. We already have a Suicide Squad. Yeah. Why do we need another one? That's, see, that's the biggest issue I have with DC. If anyone is going to burst the superhero bubble, because right now superheroes are booming beyond belief. If anyone is going to break that bubble, it's going to be DC. Because Marvel, everything they touch right now turns to gold. It would be... I could not see Marvel screwing up the superhero bubble. At least not before the end of Phase 3, at, at the very least. DC, on the other hand, has got a heap of superhero movies coming that aren't the Dark Knight. If you know what I mean, yeah, DC's they... biggest seller is Batman, and with Suic could... Suicide Squad oh. coming out as its own sort of another independent timeline, you've now got Gotham, you've got Arrow slash Flash, you've got um, the Justice League movies that they're trying to set up, and Suicide Squad. You've now got five or six parallel timelines all happening at the same time, and in some cases involving the same characters. That's what you've got to be careful of. See, Marvel can get away with the parallel timelines with Spider-Man and X-Men and the Marvel Cinematic Universe because they don't cross characters over. Yes, they I know. Some wait, 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 wait. Well. Let me finish. With the exception of Quicksilver and... Um, what's her face? I forgot the name. Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. That is the exception. And Wolverine. Well, there hasn't been a and Wolverine. Lady. They want to bring Wolverine into the cinematic universe. They want to bring X-Men into the cinematic universe. And Marvel is doing its damnedest to do that. Stan what? Lee that's said that in a recent interview. That he, they're very, very, very interested in getting them in. 
the issue is there's a million lawyers on both sides and to yeah. argue out the deal they've got to work out how much each how much each um, group is going to put in towards the movie and all the different bits and pieces and how it would sort of come together that is the downside that is the biggest issue Marvel faces and but Marvel being Marvel everything turns to gold they will get past that eventually and I would love to see Spidey in a movie I would love to see Wolverine in an Avengers movie I would love to see Avengers versus X Men as a movie for oh that would be a, that would Avengers Avengers four Avengers versus X Men would be fucking spectacular Hello, and just... right now Marvel's got the perfect opportunity to do that simply because um, X Men has just had a soft reset if you're gonna bring the two together now is the perfect time to do it you don't have to do it directly you don't have to do it directly just have the X Men universe have some of the buildings in the background of it from... So it's got Stark Tower. Just say. just it's, That's all you need. Have Spider-Man, the next Spider-Man movie, have Stark Tower in New York there, where it's meant to be, where it is in the Avengers movies. Just randomly. Just as a head nod. You only need that one little head nod to sort of set the seed. And once that seed is set, it'll go epic. So, yeah, anyway. Well, see, I, I, I want Logan and Deadpool because they have history and it's funny. Oh, yeah. Especially um, just some of the animated movies I've watched over the years. De- um, there was one scene and it's like, Deadpool's like, Logan, I've missed you. Nobody calls me Bub anymore. <laughs> I, I, but, um, my my favourite Deadpool moment is, and I've, is he's flying in a jet with Spider Man, and Spider Man's like, I didn't know you have a yeah. jet. And De- <laughs> Deadpool's like, it's like, oh, I borrowed it from Tony Stark. Stark. <laughs> I borrowed it from Stark. And then it cuts to an airport, and you just see spray painted on the ground. I owe you one jet. <laughs> and Stark is just standing there, scratching his head, like, "What the hell? <laughs> Who steals a jet? <laughs> this is a Grand Theft Auto." <laughs> only, only Wade Wilson can get away with that. <laughs> but, um, look, and uh, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna jump back to DC because I also have some cons with the casting as well. Yeah, you've got two minutes, so make it really quick. All right. So, uh, Tom Hardy, he's already got an, he already had an established character as Bane, and I actually really loved his Bane, so I don't know why they're rehashing him. I don't know why no. they're reusing Tom Hardy. Now comes to the one I really don't like. Jared Leto was Joker. Yeah, I... Yeah. <laughs> to be perfectly We've honest... Past the Heath Ledger as Joker. Uh, no, no, it's, it's not, it, no, no. He owned the role, but it's time to let it be. Well, it's, no, it's, it's not only that, it's the Joker has... It, the, the Joker is to Batman like zombies are to TV at the moment. It's been well, done they, to they death. Done evil, yeah, same difference. They've been done to death. Um, let the Joker as a character sit for a while. And yeah, off well, to the well, side, you've got hundreds of villains to choose from. You don't need to bring the damn Joker in to every other DC movie. Oh, yeah. Well, the, the thing is that, is that unfortunately, with Suicide Squad, is if you go look at the animated movie that they did back in, I can't remember when that was actually, but they did one. Um, they uh, Joker was in it was in Arkham or was just brought into Arkham at the time, and hardly saw him, and that then leads into the Arkham Asylum games. So they had to do a Joker. The problem I have with Jared Leto is he hasn't got that much of an acting resume. And to be honest, yeah, it's a hard thing to, to go past um, Heath Ledger because yeah. he, he maybe that's why he's brilliant. being cast in the role. Though. Yeah, I think I think it's a safe I think it's a safe pick that they're trying to go with. Yeah, because if he I fucks it up, no one gives a shit at this point. Yeah, that too. But I also think they're still worried about the whole mental side of things that happened when Heath Ledger was doing Joker. Yeah, yeah uh, you can get a little too into it. Uh, anyway, we're on the last sort of 40 seconds of the show. We've got the outro music sort of playing quietly in the background, hopefully. Um, so this is your guys' chance to have your last say. So uh, I'll let uh, Scarecrow go first. All right, guys. It's been a blast once again. Have a good week. And keep on checking sci-fi stuff out. There's plenty out there across traditional sci-fi and animation and Stuart's turn uh, thanks all for having me uh, thanks everyone for listening and as always may the force be ever in your favour
there. And I'm the host, David. I'm heading off now. Uh, jump on to Save Sci-Fi on Facebook. How do you save Sci-Fi on Facebook? How do you save Sci-Fi on Facebook? How do you save Sci-Fi on Facebook? How do you save Sci-Fi on Facebook?